Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of BS for Bill. In today's episode, we're dealing with the fundamentals of science. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. You can, if you can build a car, you can build a door. That's right, it is the long awaited for, eagerly anticipated, oh there's a bar over there, I would really like a beer, uh, episode where I replaced the garage door. Uh, fireworks and shit everywhere. Yeah, hey, so we're doing that, but we're also uh, never stopping thinking about jamming the V10 into the 240, and that is why I'm at the auto parts store right now, because I did some research, and I found out that BMW makes a very small alternator for a very old, very smaller car that we may be able to slap onto our car and then have more room for the engine bay. So I'm gonna go buy one right now, and we'll see what it looks like in the shop. I expected that alternator. I expected that alternator to be a lot smaller than it is. Uh, it looks like it might be at best one inch smaller than mine, the current one on the car. The current one on the car puts out 170 amps, I think, where this one only does 80. Um, so it's definitely reduced uh, amperage. So I'm gonna see if it fits. If it fits, we'll take the hit, but if it doesn't, um, obviously it's not worth it and we'll just continue with the strategy for mounting it. I really want to get a beer. It's so hot outside. I deserve it. I've earned it. Could I get a water and a half liter of Coors Light? Thank you. All right, back in the shop. That was a nice little break. Way to get some air conditioning in my life. Now it's time to change our focus to alternator space and uh, do some more measurements around that alternator and our new one. Uh, I want to do everything that we can to guesstimate shape, size, placement uh, without installing the new alternator. All right, after some careful measurements, I found out that the new alternator is not even a noticeable size different than the old alternator. So there's a couple options. One is maybe I got the wrong alternator, but I doubt it. I did a lot of research for like BMW racing alternator, trying to find an alternator that doesn't run on a V-belt uh, that would work on this car that was smaller. And, uh, and, and that's what I came up with, but you know, it could, it still could be the wrong one. But anyways, um, not not gonna make any real significant difference. Definitely not gonna get the engine over an entire inch. We'd have to have one that was several inches smaller. Now I found some online that are really small, but they only push about 45, 50 amps at most. And you know, this car I think was set up with a 175 amp alternator, maybe 160. Uh, and a lot of people say, well, you're not running a lot of the BMW electronics. That's not really true. We're not using like, the BMW headlights and the BMW taillights, but we are powering headlights, taillights. We're using all the BMW dashboard, all the BMW ECU, all the BMW sensors, um, BMW stereo, probably not. I don't even know if I'll get to have a stereo, but you know what I'm saying? You know where I'm getting? We're actually gonna be using quite a bit of the BMW power. So um, the other thing that completely sold it for me, I was reading in the comments, is you guys were saying that all the Lamborghini engines are mounted over an inch. So if it's good enough for Lamborghini, it's good enough for BS for Build. Now I can say it's a front mid-engine car with an engine that's oriented like a Lamborghini. I mean, you, you had me at, at Lambo. Overall, I'm pretty cool with mounting the engine one inch over. I think if somebody notices it, it'll actually kind of add some character to the build. So I'm cool with that. Next thing we gotta do, B is for build garage doors. This old piece of crap's gotta go. We gotta install the new one. I'm gonna start with a good old fashioned tear down. Oh man, I'm gonna have to throw this thing away. That's gonna be impossible. B is for build. Number one in garage, broken garage door removal services in the Pacific Northwest. Call for further information. I tried to watch a how to install a garage door episode on YouTube, but I fell asleep. I'll try and make mine a little bit more exciting. Cue the rock and roll music and pyrotechnics. Well, I apologize. It is really, uh, really tough to make a garage door install exciting at all. 
this is this is not going well. Uh, I don't know if you could notice, but uh, I'm three hours in and I've got three panels in. This is this is terrible. Um, I had to take off the track on the left side, and I'm going to have to take off the track on the right side as well. They uh, the old tracks don't comply with the in engineering for the new tracks so that's an issue but then also the new tracks don't even want to install correctly because I don't I don't know why basically when you take the door thickness and this thing's thickness and then max out this track over here I still had to space it off the wall because it couldn't get this railing thing far enough away from this thing to make it fit and not totally squeeze this thing in there I don't know why that is but uh oh well I'm gonna keep going keep working on it I'm working on this side now. I'm going to pull this uh, this little roof track thing off right here and uh, start putting the rollers on that side. Fascinating stuff, I know, guys. This garage door build is really starting to bum me out, man. It's taking way too much time. It's ruined my shop. It's ruined outside my shop. I've got garbage everywhere. Ugh. Anyways, I'm almost done. I gotta get this thing attached up here. Um, I gotta get the other one on the other side and then I can put the final thing of it in there and that, oh, and then the locks on it so I can lock it down. And that's where I'm gonna leave it tonight. After that, it's just a spring and, and something suspension thing in my bobber. But uh, I really wanna get back to work uh, today. I, don't, I didn't want this whole episode to be about a garage door install because this is, this is mighty boring stuff. It's, it's mighty boring and I've spent six and a half hours on it. To be fair, if I would have read the instructions, it would have only been about three hours. But anyways, let's get it busted out. All right, garage door is in. I don't really want to talk about it. It took way, way, way too long, but hey, it's there. Let's move on and salvage my sense of self-worth. I want to build something for the car. I'm waiting for my, um, what are those called? Polyurethane engine mounts to come in. They're not an engine mount. They are a universal polyurethane uh, bushing thing that I can use, and I'm going to use these, actually these things, so we'll burn, we'll burn these out at a later date. I'm not prepared to do that right now. Uh, but we'll burn out the polyurethane until just the aluminum is left and then we'll utilize the aluminum with new polyurethane bushings and that on that mixed with this will make our mount. But because we need a little bit of room for the polyurethane, it's a little bit it's got a little bit of thickness. I think it's a little over a half an inch. We're going to need to drop this down even further. And that runs into an issue which is basically as we drop this stuff down more and more and more, you can kind of see down here that the, the fins aren't getting enough they're getting enough of the frame rail. So we need to make the frame rail longer, wider, taller, taller. We gotta make the frame rail taller in this section right here. To do that specifically for what we're using it for, putting pressure on it coming from a sideways, downways force, uh, it's essentially the force is gonna push down which is then going to cantilever this and push it out. Uh, the best way to do it is with a triangle shape, so this is a, a crude example, is if we make metal that is like this and we weld it underneath here and then we can even put a backing plate on here if we want to, if it will have uh, when, when the force is pushing down on it, on its flat face in the front, well, it would be like this, actually. When the force is coming down right here, it'll push up against here, and then the triangle part of this will reinforce the pushing up right here. So you stitch weld it all the way around, or full weld it all the way around, and it will be the strongest, stronger than a box, even. So I will make that out of this piece of, uh, well, you know what? Let me think about that real quick. Yeah, this piece of frame rail that came with the uh, the kit. This stuff is supposed to be the pieces that come off right here. There's two of these pieces, I believe. Um, but we're not gonna be using these. We're gonna be using something that's a little bit more hardcore for that stuff. So no worries, we can use this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half. One will be used for each side. I don't have the width 100% dialed in yet, but I know that there's enough material here for two of these. And then we'll see what we can do.
with enough banging around, I got our first triangle of metal here ready to roll. So uh, the next thing, the next steps for this is welding, of course. Uh, but here's what it looks like. So imagine um, this is the backside that, that those things are going to hit on. This will sit under here, something like that. So as pressure comes from the backside, the force generated goes straight up towards that frame rail right there, towards the bottom of the frame rail. Um, so the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is tack it, use a vise, clamp it down right here, not a vise, but a clamp, clamp it down right here, tack it on this side, clamp it down over here, tack it on this side, zip this extra space off, and then I'll fill that in with our MIG welder. So this will be a fun experiment to see how good at looking I can get a weld with our MIG welder, and then I'll go ahead and use the flap disc to clean it all up. You may notice on this back side we have this, this uh, groove here that I had to do that to allow me to actually bend this metal because it's really, really strong. Uh, with where this lines up, on the car, when we weld it in here, this will be perfect actually as left alone because the MIG welder will burn and it'll be able to really set into this groove and set into that railing with the, the kind of gap that that will create. And that'll actually make a really good spot for that weld to stick, so I'm not going to fill this in purposefully because it'll be better for the weld to do that. It'll get better adhesion to the frame rail. I just finished up with the first one. So you can see that uh, the, the MIG welding went really well. Um, it actually looked a lot better before I hit it with the abrasive wheel, but I did hit it with the abrasive wheel because I wanted to make sure that this backside had no lip at all. I didn't want to inf interfere with any of this stuff. So an upside down example of how this works, it goes on the frame rail like that, engine mount bolts up like that, and gets also welded into that guy right there. So everything will have a, a lot of um, purchase on each other. Everything will be welded into something and not hanging off. Probably a little overkill uh, for this and for this engine mount, but I'd rather be safe than be sorry. All right, guys, that's what I'm going to call this one. Normally, I would finish the other one, but that garage door took a lot out of me. But in the next 240Z episode, we are going to, I'll do the other side of that, and Eric will be here. We'll burn out those engine mounts, and we will develop our full-on engine mounts and have the engine mounted in the next episode. So look forward to that. Uh, no episode tomorrow, but there will be an episode uh, during the weekend, which is a, a super special. We don't normally do weekend episodes, but we're going to drop one anyways. And this weekend, this Saturday, Chelsea and I are going to be at Beamer Fest. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook if you want up to date as far as where we're going to be at inside the event and what times we're going to be there. We're not going to be there for a super long window, uh, but check it out. Check us out. If you're there, please come say hi. We can hang out, shoot the shit, and look for uh, other amazing BMW creation. Not that mine counts yet my car doesn't qualify quite yet but it will eventually next year we will bring this thing to beaver fest i also want to thank all of you that have hit that sponsor button and all of you that support us on patreon uh if you guys want to get that behind the scenes video that drops tomorrow so hit the sponsor button follow us on patreon um that sponsor video about our newest gambler 500 car uh that is going to be unveiled the game plan for it what it is all that stuff uh that's going to be unveiled in a video tomorrow so i hope you guys enjoy that Thank you guys all so much, and I'll see you soon. Peace!